I was very shy. I was very awkward and I was very insecure because I was made to believe I was fat and ugly my whole life. I was mm. beat up by kids at school. I was beat up by my mom. I was always bullied. So like I was told I was fat and I was ugly and I believed that up until I was 35 years old. Man, I have so trouble I was with very that. Insecure. I mean, yeah. I, I know that when you're a hugely successful child star, yeah, which, which you were, I mean, right? Like, so I know that when you're in a school system and you're the big child star, that there's actually like a bullying component, right? Where even though you have like insane amounts of power or popularity you, or whatever, popularity yeah. or you're, but you're, not you're, in school, you're a celebrity. Yeah. And, but in and school so, it's a different ball game. You're like the, you're, you're the dumb kid. Cause you leave all the time. You're the stupid kid. And, right. You know, and you must think you're special because you get to like not be here when the rest of us have to slave away at school right. all day. That's the way they looked at it. It's pretty, hmm. it's pretty incredible to me that, that, uh, that you can be bullied in that kind of a situation. But then what, what, what else to to be made to believe that you're fat when you were never fat right? i was a little bit chubby like i had like the, the what movie were you fattest in <laughs> um i would say it wasn't like maybe a movie but i think definitely on the bad news bears tv series i mean i got okay. a big round that ass was in face. the fucking 70s i was seven and eight years old yeah but yeah. this is called screwed up in the head sure. and, you know your mom tells you you're fat you think you're fat i wasn't allowed to eat in those days she would literally keep meals from me or like hide the you know candy in the junk food because right. i wasn't allowed to eat it um so that was then right. but then even all the way up until gremlins like look at me in gremlins i'm filling out those those pants okay. pretty tight you know i got right. like the chubby face i got the uh, little bit of a belly in there gremlins was uh like 84 that was like 85? 83 Oh, 83, 83, I was wow. shooting it. Yeah, 83, mm. I was shooting it. It came out in 84, 85. And then Goonies, we shot in 84, and it came out in 85. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. So and, by uh, Goonies, I started to lose a little bit of it. And then by Stand By, Stand me, by me is where I like, okay, real. came into my... Were you already doing coke on Stand By no, Me? No, <laughs> okay. hell no, no, no. <laughs> no, I was still like a kid. gremlins, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That, none of that, that didn't start... So, okay, so the first time I did cocaine was because my mom was doing it with somebody on the set of The Lost Boys. Okay. This little, hot little Asian woman who, I was sitting there one night because I was like falling asleep and I was depressed because I'm like, how the hell am I going to stay for these night shoots? I've never done a night shoot. I mean, I've done like the Friday 13th night shoots, but that was like, we come in at noon, we work until midnight and then you go home because like when you're a kid, they're only going to let you work so late and right. then they're going to call it. But like now... I'm still a kid, but I'm 14 years old, 15 years old. You know, when it, when you get to those ages, all of a sudden they start treating you more like you're an adult, right? And the, the work code still applies, but they'll be like, oh, we're going to do like a, a half day, half night. So we're coming in at three in the afternoon and right. we're working until three in the morning. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I, I wasn't very good at that. So I was a little frustrated. Like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to stay up all night? And this little Asian lady comes up to me and she's like, hey, you should just do what your mom does to stay awake and i was like what's that and she's like cocaine and i was like uh okay uh, i wouldn't really know where to get it she's like oh i have it just come to my apartment we'll do something it'll be easy and then you'll be fine i was like oh okay well she makes it sound so easy and harmless i might as well if my mom's doing it how bad could it right. be mm -hmm. you know how old were you uh i was like i said 15 15 yeah when was the first time you did coke how old were you oh shit i didn't do coke until i was uh, 20, I think. Mm. Yeah. Late bloomer. Experience. I did it on my high school lunch break. <laughs> Pussy. <laughs> did you yeah, what a rookie. Yeah, I did it at my senior year. Somebody's yeah. like, come over, and I did oh, it. Oh, it's bad. So I got, okay, so the first time Which I did I, it, so sorry it was a bad it. experience. Right, okay. Because it was, it was, well, it was good at first. Like, we did it, we had fun. It was like, you know, we were talking, sure. we were sitting in this girl's apartment. She takes me out driving. She taught me how to drive a stick shift high on cocaine <laughs> for the first time. Um, Casey Jones. And then, <laughs> and then... You know, here's the thing. I did one line, and I thought that one line was going to last forever. We're going to live forever. <laughs> you know, so that's what I was thinking at the moment. Fame! Um, but what happened was, unfortunately, I was wrong, and it did not. And so I didn't go to sleep in between when I, that whole thing, which was like, say, 6 to 12 in the afternoon. And then at 12, I go out with my friend for the day, and then I've got like a 4 o'clock call. And I never slept anywhere in between, and I've got to work from 4 to 4. And so then I say to the girl, like, hey, you know what? I have a feeling this stuff might wear off. 
how long does it take to wear off? She's like, oh, it'll be worn off by the time you go into work. And I'm like, well, I'm going to probably need more than to keep me up. She's like, don't worry, I'll meet you there. I'll give you some more. Well, that was my first lesson in people doing drugs are not very honest. so yeah found out the hard way that she was full of it and uh waited for her to show up she She didn't show up she didn't show up she flaked on me she left me hanging right and so i'm sitting there like you know showing up for work getting my costume on like half asleep like okay i gotta make it through she'll be here any minute it's cool and i'm like calling her texting her i don't think we had texts in those days that's a lie i was just calling her (laughs) um yeah yeah. and she didn't show up like no response no anything you know I'm sending a birdie over to her house. <laughs> um, and so she doesn't show up. She leaves me hanging. And it's now like 8 o'clock at night. And we're shooting the very first scene that day. Which happens to be, hold for it, wait for it. Yeah, the big truth, justice, and the American way speech scene that everybody remembers. That moment was during this hell. So it was literally at that moment where I'm like, and Joel Schumacher's like, okay, so you're going to come to this spot, you're going to stop here, you're going to pause for two seconds, you're going to deliver the first part of the line, then you're going to wait, and Corey's going to clear over here, and then Jameson's going to come over to this point, and then when he stops, you're going to open the magazine, you're going to look at it, you're going to pull it down to right here, and then you're going to look over at the top. I mean, like, all these instructions, I'm like, well, uh, huh? And what? you pulled it. Is- no, dude. Oh, you didn't I pull did it. not pull it. I did, <laughs> it was it was a disastrous did, meltdown. Was, was like, it was <clears throat> it clear to anybody that the drugs were involved? Here's or? what was clear. I'm a guy that's very on my shit all the time. I'm very efficient. I'm very like I try to stay, you know, I'm a professional. I study the night before. I get all into my memorization. I come in the next day. I know my stuff backwards and forwards, you know, impeccable. I'm a professional. I don't mess around. But all of a sudden I couldn't remember one thing to the next that he's telling me to do. And he's looking at me like, what is wrong with you? Like, dude, I just said three times, here's the order of the thing. And you just, you know, I say, come to this mark, stop, you know, freeze, turn around, lower the thing, and then say your line. You're going over here. You're walking past your mark. You're not lowering the thing. You're saying your line without even looking at the place you're supposed to look. I'm like, uh, okay, let's do it again. So that happens like 10 times. And eventually Joel Schumacher's like, okay, I don't know what's wrong with you. Are you on drugs? Are you on drugs, Feldman? Is that what's going on here? Like, totally called me out. And I was like, huh? I wish I was on drugs. I wouldn't be so screwed up right now. No. So, <laughs> so yeah, that was the problem. I had no drugs. Um, so he, he knew there was something going on. And he and, fired and this me. was at a time when uh, when you, everything was still shot on film. There was oh, no absolutely. Digital. Yeah, it was all film. So, so to, to screw up a take was actually kind of expensive at that time. Very expensive, mm-hmm. yeah. And uh, you said he fired you? Yeah, he fired me. He fired me right there on the spot. He's like, listen, Feldman, I don't know what's going on with you, but you're fired. You need to get your act together. I can't have this on my set. I don't know what's going on, but you're, you know, coming in all out of it, looking like you're high, da 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 da. And I'm like, I'm not high. For like two hours. But but what happened was they were like, look, the only way we're going to let you continue is if you get some, where's your mom? That was the first question. Where's your mom? Why is she not here? Why are you all out of it? Somebody needs to answer for this. And I was like, "Um, good luck finding her. She's probably off with some crew member in the bar. Wow. You know, doing blow, getting drunk, getting laid, Mm -hmm. who knows? And so they couldn't find her. They all did like an APB to try and find my mom. Nobody could find her. They're like, this is a disaster. And then they're like, well, we can't really blame it on the kid if he's got no adult supervision. So we've got to at least give him a chance by like saying, okay, you've got to have like some adult supervision around you. Right. And then if you still mess up, then we'll fire you for real. So they decided to see like, is your dad available? Can your dad come down? My dad couldn't come down because he had his talent management company, which was basically like a false management company where it was like, like, like the powers, remember JG powers or whatever, like where they would like take your money and do uh-huh. seminars and like they'd pick like a hundred people to like, Oh yeah, you're the best looking one. So you're going to get a free photo shoot, but everybody else has got to pay $15,000 for that same photo shoot in an acting class. And maybe one day you'll get an acting part. And that was kind of like his thing, but he had my movie posters up all over the walls and it was called new talent enterprises. And it was like over on the sleazy part of Coenga there. And anyway, <laughs> so he was doing that and he didn't have time to come play babysitter. So he says, no, I'm not available. So they were like, well, who can you get up here? And that we called Marty Weiss. And Marty Weiss was a guy who'd been kidnapping me since I was 11 years old. Um, he was part of the science fiction 
awards or whatever it was called the Saturn he was, he Awards. He was your agent? He was not my agent. Not he was agent. A, literally just a, like a stalker hanger on dude that basically got into my life because he worked for the Saturn Awards and was trying to give me an award. So he like called me up at comes to find out that he basically gave awards to all of like or like got in touch with all the Steven Spielberg kids so I thought he was just a big Steven Spielberg fan big Disney fan he loved all those kids he was he introduced me to another kid that became one of my best friends at the time named Jason Presson who was in Explorers I don't know if you remember the movie Explorers with uh, Ethan Hawke and River Phoenix but okay. yeah that was a Joe Dante movie um, Steven Spielberg movie as well but anyway so so he became friends with him and then introduced me to him and he became my best friend up until I met Corey Haim a couple of years later so from like Gremlins to Lost Boys this kid Jason Preston was my best friend so anyway come to find out that this guy's like molesting everybody and so he's wow. a pedophile and then we find out that basically well he comes in it's in you know my book and in my movie and whatever and I don't want to get into the graphic stories but let's just say that he took advantage of the situation Okay, mm -hmm. and at that time, this was the set of Lost Boys, so you are 14... Turning 15. Turning 15, and like so incredibly famously, at the age of 15, you started the emancipation right. movement? Right, so what happened was, like, so I, okay, since Marty, it wasn't because Marty was there, it was because I was embarrassed and I was shamed that I went down that road and I did drugs at all because I was so anti-drug normally. Like, why did I do well, that? Well, drugs aside, there was, like, financial fuckery going on, Well, right? all kinds of shit, yeah. So, yeah. But the bottom line was I was just like, dude, my life sucks right now. I need to, like, try and keep this job because otherwise I'm screwed. This is my only chance at, like, staying away from that abusive household, you know? So especially now that they realize my mom's the bad guy, like, that's the best news really out of all of this is that I have a chance to get away from my mom because she was really wretched and Your really awful. Your parents were together? They were not together. Not together. So, so. that was the point. was like, right. if my dad was going to at any point come in and kind of save the day because at least I knew with him, you know, we'd smoke weed together and he wouldn't kick my ass. You know what I mean? My mom was just like psycho, wanted to beat me all the time, wanted to abuse me, wanted to do whatever she could to just like... So hard drugs and physical violence or versus, weed and everything's pretty cool. Right. And he's a musician <laughs> and like, you know, like probably hit on all my girlfriends, but whatever, you know, <laughs> yeah. sort of thing. Um, so I went to the dad, but that was after we got back from Santa Cruz. So once we got back from Santa Cruz, then my dad says, hey, here's a great idea. Let's get you involved in this thing called Hollywood Kids Say No to drugs and you'll be like the spokesperson because we know you hate drugs and I'm like perfect so I start doing that then he introduces me to pedophile number two um or actually I'd already met pedophile number two which was Alfie but he came through the whole because I knew him from being supposedly Bobby Hoffman's son Bobby Hoffman was the head of casting for Paramount Television and cast me in all of my TV shows growing up as a kid and many other kids as well. And then he was living with this dude, Alfie, and Alfie started doing these underage clubs called Alfie's Soda Pop Club. So that's when my mom invited me to go to Alfie's club or whatever, his party with Bobby at their house. And he's like, yeah. And she's like, yeah, Alfie's going to come pick you up. So you're very special. You're very lucky because Alfie's going to come pick you up and take you to this party. So Alfie was one, then John, but John comes through my dad. And so my dad over at New Talent is like, hey, uh, I can't be on the set with you during Lost Boys all the time. And you know, I'm really busy and stuff. So I'm going to get you this assistant guy who's basically going to drive you around and be your gopher and be your chaperone and be your whatever. Because again, right, the whole reason Joel Schumacher wanted to get me parental guidance and wanted to like make sure that I was set before he kept me on board was to make sure that I didn't get around some flunky who wasn't going right. to take it seriously and wasn't going to care about my best interests, right? Well, so what does my dad do? I go to my dad's for better care and end up with a new flunky who's also a pedophile. Isn't that ironic? Like every time oh, I get swapped to somebody, it's like another pedophile. So anyway, yeah, Did that's you tell exactly anybody or are you keeping it in? Who are you going to tell? Yeah. I mean, your parents are the ones that are bringing them right. into your life. Right. And by, by the way, um, nothing happened with the Alfie guy until after I was living with my dad. So when I was living with my mom, the only thing that was happening was that Marty Weiss was coming and breaking me 
out of my house in the middle of the night and taking me out on drives, but he never molested me during that time. He was only kidnapping me and we were having fun together. So it didn't look like anything I would see. That's a thing. That's how they get you, right? They get your trust by like the grooming you, right? By being your friend and being like, Hey, I'm going to be the cool guy. That's going to get you out of this bad situation. Mm. So then you trust them. So how does the emancipation, uh, court. So how do we get there? So, so ironically, it's the guy that, was hired by my dad, John Grissom, who is the pedophile, who says, hey, you got to get away from these abusive parents and they're taking all your money and right. they're screwing you over. We got to get you out of this situation. Chalk went up for the pedophile because that was a good call. <laughs> right. So he's like, so we'll get you in. Was it though? Really? Who knows? That's I mean, the thing. Because like, then, like, then he also introduced me to cocaine because like right, after that, okay. so now that I'm with him, it's like we're hanging out all the time like, oh, look at Sam Kinison, all these guys at the comedy store. They're like, love you. Let's go hang out with them. And then we walk into their parties and there's giant mounds of cocaine on the table. 15 year old should not have been there right. in the first place mm -hmm. but he walks me in he's like hey man this is a party and i'm like cool it's a party and then like i'm like but i don't do cocaine and i resisted it for like the first six months hanging out with all those guys and then eventually i just got weak and i was like well they look like they're all having fun and if they're having fun i guess I mean, they I were have having a pretty too. good time at the comedy store they were <laughs> in they, the they 80s were the yeah. yeah that was before they crossed the imaginary line so it was right. all good mm -hmm. in the for hood sure. you know and is that uh, when kennison had the house like right up the hill yep, from the comedy Crystal. store Crest Hill. That's it. So we were chilling at Crest Hill. So, so anyway, so, so it was at the Crest Hill house actually where I did my first like not the one from my mom, which was the yeah. one time, one line, but this was like the first time I actually did did cocaine. Okay. So John Grissom gives it to me and he's like Oh, you gotta try. Now you gotta try crack. Now you gotta try heroin. Now you gotta try oh, LSD. Wow. So every drug that I ever did literally was because <clears throat> of the same dude. Okay. Like, How soon after did you start doing heroin? Everything. Oh, like two years later. Two years it was, later. It was a process. But so, I had to go through my cocaine phase, like where I got really into coke for a while. That was like the whole thing lasted two years. But like basically I was really into cocaine for like six months to a year. And then was like, you know, I see it destroying all my friends' lives. I see it destroying my life. I crossed that imaginary line. People are having that talk with me. They're like, you don't see you have a problem. You right. have a problem. I'm like, what is the problem? I'm staying up for three, four days at a time, and we're having a great time. No problem. You know? Right. And they're like, no, that's a problem. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so that, that is the, the problem. Pedophile, right. <laughs> that pedophile didn't do everything to help, but he, he was the one who said, you got to get away from your parents. So I can have more control over you and right, do right, what right. I want with you and put you on drugs so I can completely manipulate and control okay. you. Okay, understood, mm. but, but was You're it not that? like some superhero. Right, right. but did he, <laughs> did he get you set up with some kind of attorney? Because yes, I'm just fascinated by yes, the idea. Like the idea and of the you attorney, being... And the attorney, I hope yeah, you don't mind. Yeah, go for it. Like the, the uh, because you were like the first like child star to legally like become independent of your parents before like when you're only 15 years old that's not like the first i believe drew did it first oh drew barrymore she might have done it first okay so we were right neck and neck around the same right yeah i mean it's but... a pretty big deal and 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 what i read about it was that you were a bona fide millionaire at 15 years old, but by the time the court proceedings played out, like all they had to show for all of your earnings was $40,000. You got your, you did your fact check. I yeah, like so, it. Very well done. Right? So, so, uh, <laughs> so, well, let me tell you how it actually went down. So, so basically what happened was, in order to get emancipated, I had to be on my shit. Like I had to know what I was doing. I had to be able to like, say okay this is bop 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 right because otherwise they're not going to let you go they sure. want to see a that you know what you're talking about you know your finances you know where you're at and that you're going to be able to be self-sufficient and provide for yourself in the event that they turn over the power of signature to you right so um basically what happened was i went down to the producer's pension health and welfare which is where everybody who's an actor their residuals go their payment their you know futures their pension it's all put into there so there's SAG? an accounting it's not part of sag it's a separate division separate building altogether. were you a producer i was not no 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 it's the producers 
pension health and welfare, meaning the producers have to pay into this pension mm. for the on the behalf of the actors, right? Okay. Okay. So there's a certain amount of money that accrues. So they can A, see all the money that you've earned, and then B, see what's left in your accounts because they're the ones that make sure that, like with the Jackie Coogan law, they have to put like 15% aside from every 15, paycheck. That keeps coming up. It's crazy. Your yeah. parents are only allowed to blow 85% of your money. Right, exactly. <laughs> but then we're going to yeah. make sure you got a few cents left. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what is not covered up, right? Because the way my parents did it, which was super slick, because typically like a manager gets 10 to 15%, as you know, uh -huh. right? Well, my, my parents were both my managers and they both took 15%. Wow. So there's your 30% right there off the top. Then you got 40% to taxes. I don't know about but like literary. Then you got maybe. your business manager, your agent. Your agent takes 10%. Business manager takes 5%. Wait, what's happened? Where there's 15%. How left. do they justify 15%? Because they figure they're taking off of work. You're right. That is a bit too much. Why yeah, should those I, kids earn anything? Screw those kids. Yeah, no, no, no. Like, why, why wouldn't it be like... Uh, why not 100% or like yeah. No, of 90. course. It should be. Yeah. yeah. Kids should get all the money. Yeah, right. right. It should be 85% to the kid and like 15% yeah. to divide like, between all the managers. Right. Because the kid's doing the work, right? But do they figure because giving like... Giving up their childhood. Giving up their freedom. Right. Yeah. yeah. So and, I mean, and, Go ahead. What's even more crazy? I mean, we we could talk about the unfairness of, uh, of all, all the all of the life. money being yeah. the commissions, but but it's just so fascinating to me. A judge grants you emancipation, and so now you're 15 years old, but you are not legally an adult. Right. So it's, it's so waving waving the idea of minor. So just, here's what happens. So we go to the court, right? And I prove. Okay, so this is where that comes in. We go to Producers Pension Health and Welfare. They show me, you have earned a million dollars to this point. At 14 and a half, this is where you're at. You've earned a million dollars. However, here's what's in your account right now, and that's where the 40,000 comes Right. Came. I mean, you so, got to figure if you've earned a million, then that puts you in a pretty high tax bracket. So you could almost ballpark it at 50% goes to taxes. But tell a 50, so it's down 50 to 500. Right. You know, yeah. so there, there was fuckery going on, but it wasn't necessarily like as crazy as it's a million down to 40,000. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Out of a it's million. Bad. <laughs> Bro, it's it's pretty explain bad. to a 15 year old like taxes, right. like, look, they take out no, half I mean, I'm because with, right, of, right, right. I'm, I'm with you. It's right, bad. Because right, right, right. what? That's 4%. Right. Or is and, it even and, less? And, and, and I for, can't, you know, yeah, you know what, what, what strikes me, yeah. Yeah. given your resume at that time, you know, like with Goonies, Gremlins, Lost Friday the 13th. Boys, like Friday the 13th, right. fucking all the Bad Adam's News Bears. Place, like, Bad News Bear, all of it. Mork and Mindy with Robin Williams, it, all of it. It, it, it's, <sighs> it feels pretty shocking that you would only have earned a million dollars at that point. Well, yeah, because they weren't paying people like they were these days. Right, like there was they, no back end, there was no, no nothing. No, no. Stand and by even, me Let me tell you huge. something. Do you know what I got paid? I'll tell everybody. I got paid for Goonies. Forty thousand dollars. It was that sag scale for a principal role. Yeah, because we were on it for six months. And, and all these that's years forty thousand dollars for six months. Right, of and all work. these years later. That's crazy. Right, that's like slave labor if you think about yeah. it. And, and we're almost we're fuck we're almost forty years later, and and now sag scale for that kind of role is sixty five grand. Right, exactly. <laughs> wow. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah, got a lot wow. better. But yeah. that said, if you do one movie, you get jumped up to like the million dollar tax day. I mean, payday bracket. You know right. what I mean? Like, you do sure. one movie that's successful, you're getting an offer for a million. Yeah, dollars. the kids in Spider Man are doing fine. I did 15 number one films and was still getting like, here, license to drive. How about $100,000? Wow. And I'm like, what? It's my name over the damn title. And that's the kind of money we were making. It was Damn. terrible. It could, was terrible. Could you negotiate? Were you like told not to do that? Or I mean, what do you? Um, my my agents were like William Morris at the time, so yeah, they probably should have made sure that that didn't happen, <laughs> right. right? You would think. Yeah, dude. Thanks for watching that clip. And if you live in America, there's a good chance that this big badass tour bus is coming to your town with my bucket list tour. What is it? Well, it's an X-rated show full of all the stuff that I would have never have been allowed to do for Jackass. And a lot of it is flagrantly illegal. So, it's adults only. And if you live in any of these states, then you better go to stevo.com and check out my tour schedule. Hurry up and get your tickets too, because it's selling out everywhere. Yeah, dude. Uh. Woo! Yeah, dude.